This video shows solutions to some example problems from the Charles Law Calculation Problem Set from SciencePrimer.com. The first question we're going to answer is the following. Given a container of oxygen gas with an initial volume of 280 liters and a temperature of 29.5 degrees Celsius, calculate the volume if the temperature is changed to negative 2.4 degrees Celsius. And we're asked to give the answer to the nearest liter. So this is a question that involves Charles Law. And the relationship we're going to be working with is that if you have a container of, volume one, of, of gas that is volume of 1 at a given temperature, if you change either the volume or the temperature of that gas, the relationship is the new volume divided by the new temperature will equal the, the initial volume divided by the initial temperature. So this is the relationship. These problems are no more difficult than some of the other problems. Uh, fairly straightforward algebra, but there are a number of steps and it's easy to go wrong. So the way I'm going to suggest these problems be solved is to use the following recipe and I'm going to suggest five steps for solving this problem. The first step is to form the proper equation. And this depends upon which of these variables you're trying to find. You basically need to isolate the variable you're trying to solve for. The second step, because this relationship depends upon temperature being in Kelvin, we need to check the units. Units to make sure they're in Kelvin. And then three, once we have the proper units and the proper form of the, form of the equation, we'll plug in the numbers. Four, we'll solve the problem. And then I am going to suggest a final step here, which is to check the units again. Particularly temperature. All right, so again, I mentioned we need to check temperature because temperature units need, need to be in Kelvin for this relationship to hold. And you'll often have temperature in a unit other than Kelvin. In this case, we're in degrees C. So the relationship we need to do the second and fifth step in case we need to convert from Celsius to Kelvin is that the temperature unit Kelvin equals a number in degrees C plus 273.15. And so it's just the simple relationship. So if you have something in degree C, you need Kelvin, just add 273.15. If you need to go the other way, if you rearrange this equation, you see that uh, Celsius is Kelvin minus 273.15. So let me clear the screen, start focusing on this problem. Because I just put up a bunch of information, I'm going to bring that information back as the stuff we're going to need to follow to solve this problem. So now first step here, we're on first step, we need to form the equation. Let's look at what we're trying to find here. What we're given here is we have a, uh, an oxygen gas with an initial volume of 28, 280 liters. So this is an initial volume, so that's V1, and an initial temperature of 29.5 degrees Celsius, so that's going to be T1. We need to calculate the volume, so we have a new volume, V2, if the temperature is changed to negative 2.4 degrees C. So this is T2. So we are given T2, T1, and V1, and we're asked to find V2. So what we want to do is rearrange this equation to isolate V2. And in this case, what we want to do is bring this T2 over to the other side of the equation, and this is done by multiplying both sides by T2. T2s cancel over here, and you end up with T2 over here. And to rewrite this equation, we end up with the form of the equation we want. V2 equals T2 V1 over T1. So we've done the first. Next, we need to check the temperature units. We're given two temperatures. We're given T1, which is 29.5 degrees C. 
and T2, which is negative 2.4 degrees C. Both of these are in degrees C. We need Kelvin, so we need to add 273.15 to both of them. I'm not going to bring the calculator in. The answers to these are T1, 29.5 plus 273.15 equals 302. Point two six and negative 2.4 plus 273.15 equals 270.75. So this is the information we need for step two. So now we have the, the temperature and the proper units. This is T1. This is T2. So now we're on step three. We're going to plug in the numbers. V2 equals T2, 270.75 Kelvin, plus V1, 280 liters, divided by T1, which is 302.26 Kelvin. Kelvins are going to cancel, so we will pull the calculator in. 270.75. It's not a time plus, it's a times. Bring the calculator back. Two seventy point five times. 280 divided by 302.26. The answer we get is 250.8. Since we're asked to find the answer to the nearest liter, we'll round to 251. And let's just check. Can't the, the, the Kelvins are canceling here. We end up with liters. So the answer to this problem is 251 liters. So we solved the problem, and now we check units again, and since we're asked to find liters and we have liters, we can check off step five. Of course, the other way to answer this question, be asked this question, is to give two volumes in one temperature and be asked to find the other temperature. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll leave this information up, uh, the same information we used to solve the first problem, and bring in a second question. Similar format, different numbers. This time we're asked, given a container of helium gas with an initial volume of 448 liters, so we have V1 of 448, and a temperature of 46.7 degrees C, so this is our T1. Calculate the temperature, so we're being asked to find T2. If the volume is changed to 499 liters, so now this is V2. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go through the full rearrangement. It's the, the, the same steps we did before, but because the T2, the thing we're trying to find, is in the denominator, we actually have to go through several steps to get this into the right process. So I'll talk through it, but I'm not going to write all the steps. First thing we want to do is we want to get this T2 out of the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by T2. These T2s will cancel and end up with T2 times V1 over T1 equals V2. Notice this is the form of the equation we used to solve the previous problem. Now we want to isolate T2. I'm going to do that by multiplying both sides by T1. If I do that, I just put a T1 here and a T1 here. These T1s cancel, and I now have T2 V1 equals V2 T1. And now I just need to get rid of this V1. Divide both sides by V1. These V1s cancel, and we end up with, to write it more cleanly, this T1 is now by itself. These have all canceled, and we have this equals to V2, T1, over V1. So we've done the proper form of the equation. Now we need to check temperature units. We're given T1 in, in degrees Celsius, so T1 equals 
46.7 degrees C. I'm going to add 273.15 to that number and we end up with 319.85 Kelvin. So this is the T1 we need. So we've done the units. Now let's plug the numbers in. T2 equals V2, 499 liters, 499 liters, times, write it properly this time, T1, 319.85, 19.85 degrees Kelvin, divided by V1, which is 448 liters. So we have 448 liters. We've plugged in the numbers. Now let's solve the equation. Pull the calculator back in. 499 times 319.85 divided by 448 equals 356.26. So this is 356.26 Let's look at the units. Liters cancel. This is in Kelvin, the unit that's left. So now we've solved, and this is where this step five comes in again, because we need to check units again. We're asked to give the answer to the nearest tenth of a degree Celsius, but what we have here is Kelvin. And what I said earlier was that to go from Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273.15. If we have Kelvin, we can subtract 273.15 to give us degrees Celsius. So let's go ahead and just subtract 273.15 from this number. And I will use the calculator for this calculation. Pull it in. We have the 356.26 in there. Go ahead and just subtract 273.15. The answer we get is 83.1. So it's 83.1, and with this relationship, we're now in degrees C. So to the nearest tenth of a degree C, the answer to this problem is 83.1 degrees C.